I'm Wally Wood, and this is another edition of the Revelation File Report. We welcome you back, and this is now our entry into a new decade. That's 2020. Now, not just a new year, but a whole new decade. And I thought what we'd do is I would go back, especially for the sake of our new audience, uh, review some of the things that some of the highlights of last year's messages, because this is where we are evolving into this next year, this next decade. The things that I shared last year were basically foundational, but they're also part of the progressive evolution into what the Bible prophesies as being the end of the last days. And this next decade is going to prove to be that area of time that has been long prophesied. I want to give you some basic understanding of uh, some things we've been saying, the, the foundation we've been building, and um, so we'll all be on the same page with our veteran audience as well as our newer audience. So we're calling this Future Earth 2020. Where are we going? What lies ahead for not just this nation, but also the world as we go into this new dynamic decade? Um, as a matter of course and reminder, our basis begins back in Daniel chapter 2 with the prophet Daniel and the king Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. And I won't go through the whole story. You can go back and check this out in some of the older programs. But just as a, a thumbnail sketch here, um, Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. And in this dream, he saw something very disturbing that he could not remember let alone interpret. And so in the course of time, Daniel and his friends stood before the king. And Daniel relayed to the king what it was that he saw in his dream that so disturbed him. And in Daniel chapter 2, verses 31 through 38, Daniel said, You, O king, were looking, and behold, there stood before you a great statue. This statue was very large and of extraordinary splendor. It was in front of you, and its appearance was awesome in your sight. The head of that statue was made of fine gold. You, O king, are the king of kings, to whom the God of heaven has given the kingdom, the power, the strength, and the glory. You are the head of gold on this statue. The head of that statue was made of fine gold, its breast and its arms of silver, its belly and its thighs of bronze, its legs of iron, and his feet partly of iron and partly of clay. Daniel went on to say, There is a God in heaven who reveals mysteries, and he has made known to you what will take place in the latter days. This was your dream and the visions of your mind, in your mind as you slept, O king. Now among the march of kingdoms that Daniel unveiled to Nebuchadnezzar, we see that the Babylonian empire uh, came about in 606 B.C., and that was his particular empire, that of Nebuchadnezzar, and it lasted 70 years. It was immediately followed by the Medo-Persian Empire, which is in verse 39, and that's the upper chest and arms of that particular vision. It lasted 206 years. It was followed by the Greek Empire of Alexander the Great. It lasted 170 years, and that's the midsection of bronze and brass. Then that was followed by the Roman Empire. It lasted 666 years, and these are the two legs of iron that Nebuchadnezzar saw in the vision. Then he projected into the future, and we're interpreting this to being the day we're living in now, in which he foretold a one-world union empire in verses 41 through 43, and it would be that final empire that would carry us into the day of Christ depicted in the dream as a stone cut out of a mountain without hands and coming to earth and crushing the statue at its feet. And the entire statue fell. And this became a mountain which represented the, uh, the millennial kingdom of Christ that would, be, would go on into eternity. So where we are today is in the lower portion of that statue's vision of the one world union empire that Daniel foresaw and spoke about to King Nebuchadnezzar. And that's where we are today. World history shows a timeless trek of humanity from one empire to another. Each successive empire has been larger and mightier than its predecessor. The challenge facing today's world is, 
What about the next one? Is there yet another empire over the horizon? Bible prophecy says yes. Now, if that's true, what can we expect as we move in that direction going forward? Ancient prophecies shape our present times. What you see on the screen here are books from my library of, uh, written by pundits and prophets and professionals in every field. Too much has been published by pundits, prophets, politicians, and professionals in these contemporary times to be seriously ignored, written off, or scoffed at. And I've said that when the pr pundits prophesy, the prophets are vindicated. And you have a wide variety of books addressing one world, new world, the uh, global governance. The book on the bottom left addresses the new world parliament intended and designed to replace the United Nations one day. And right down the line, all these books having uh, been written and published over the decades of a new world that was coming. One book in particular in my library, Politics Among Nations, written by Hans J. Morgenthau, Morgenthau I'm sorry. And he wrote, and I quote, <clears throat> there's no shir shirking the conclusion that international peace cannot be permanent without a world state, and that a world state cannot be established under the present moral, social, and political conditions of the world. There is also no shirking the further conclusion that in no period of modern history was civilization more in need of permanent peace, and hence a world state. That book was published in 1949, and yet he's speaking in terms of a, the need for a world government in the future. Another book by Alvin Toffler, entitled Creating a New Civilization. He writes, a new civilization is emerging in our lives, and blind men everywhere are trying to suppress it. This new civilization brings with it new family styles, changed ways of working, loving, and living, a new economy, new political conflicts, and beyond all this, an altered consciousness as well. This is the meaning of the third wave. We will feel the full impact of the third wave in our lifetimes. He wrote a book following this book entitled The Third Wave, in which he made the same comments there as he made in this particular book preceding it. But I make note of the fact that he said that there will be new family styles, new political conflicts, and even changed ways of working, loving, and living. Changed ways of loving, new family styles. It brings it to mind the homosexual agenda, new ways of loving, a whole new society based on new standards that are not moralistic. Just thought I'd make note of that. Jesus said in Matthew 24, verse 34. The generation that sees these things would not pass away until all had been fulfilled. Never in the history of man has there been the complexity of society across every spectrum as we have today. And he said that the generation that saw these things of which he himself prophesied and the prophets around him prophesied would not cease to exist until everything had been fulfilled, which included his return. And that's important for us to note. That generation that sees these things will not pass away. In Matthew 24, verse 6, do not let your heart be troubled. Why? Because we were told about it before it got here, before it happened. Do not be dismayed. Don't be shaken. Don't be shocked. Because all of these things must take place before the end comes, he said. And that's what this program and this ministry is all about. I'm not a prophet of doom and gloom. I'm simply a newsman who is a believer, who studies Bible prophecy, and reviews current world trends in light of those prophecies. And I relay it back to my audiences, to mostly believers. But hey, I've shared this in situations where there were no believers there and still made an impact because they see the facts, facts that they never imagined before moving in this direction that happens to have been prophesied in ancient Bible prophecies.
You see on your screen the emerging constitution. This was written by Rexford Guy Tugwell, who is part of the uh, administration of uh, Franklin Roosevelt. And he established, or he put forth, the model for a new U.S. Constitution. And he called it the Constitution to the New States of America. Not the United States, but the New States. And we've gone through that before, and I'll show you some other slides on that in just a few moments. Below that is the Constitution for the Federation of Earth. This is Earth's first global constitution involving every nation on Earth. We've reviewed that this past year, and there will be a few more points I'll make up here in just a moment as well. So likewise, you in Matthew 24, he says, when you see these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Upper left corner, Senior Scholastics Magazine. <clears throat> this was in 1973, if I recall correctly. Showing students with their Social Security numbers tattooed in their foreheads and talked about the day of a cashless, moneyless system where people would use a uh, private identification number to gain access to their checking accounts. And students would use the same thing in their high school and college setups. And this was an artist's rendering of students wearing their Social Security numbers tattooed in their forehead in 1973. The day the dollar died, talking about the uh, cessation of currency, where currency all around the world would come to its end, be re replaced by a digital economic system. This is indeed a day of increased stress and pressure around the world. There's a point in time addressed in prophetic scripture when the ultimate extreme is to arrive on the world scene, when certain indicators begin to happen that point to select prophecies of the times of their occurrence. Then you know that the time itself has arrived. These are indicators that are unique to all of history. They were to occur only one time in the history of man, and that would be at the end. Matthew 24, 21, it will be a time such as has not occurred since the beginning of the world until now, nor ever shall be again. Now that was Jesus speaking it, but he's also referring back to what Daniel said in chapter 12 of Daniel when he said, there shall be a time of such distress as has never occurred since there was a nation, even until that time. These are the days that we're living in now. A day that will see global uh, governance and centralization of all governments. On your screen, you see the uh, predominant three models of the world constitution and of new constitutions at large. In 1972, the New World Money System was published by uh, Willard Cantonen, Cantonen, in which he sp spoke in terms of a moneyless system that was coming in the next century the Emerging Constitution in 1974, a constitution for the world, the first model came out in 1965, uh, constructed by the Center for the Study of Democratic Institutions in Santa Barbara, California. That was followed in 1977 with the first model of a constitution to the Federation of Earth. <clears throat> a newer model, more recent model, came out in 1991, and we'll point that in just a moment. Bottom left, is the new flag of the new states of America. We were divided into 10 regions in 1972 by Executive Order 11647, issued by uh, President Richard Nixon, dividing our nation into 10 federal regions. Each region had its own capital, apart from the state capitals that already existed. These are now known as the FEMA regions. And with this, in 1973, in Smithsonian Magazine, came the new model of the new flag of the new states of America, the regional flag of the regionalized America. So for some timely updates, we now have a world parliament that is growing, <clears throat> it's maturing, and it's intended and designed one day to replace the United Nations. The provisional world parliament was founded in 1958 by the World Constitution and Parliament Association of Lakewood, Colorado. Its founder, uh, Professor Philip Isley, 
he and I corresponded a number of times back in those days, and he sent me the originating founding documents and bills of the Provisional World Parliament at that time. And again, go back and check some of our earlier programs, and you'll see us talking at greater length about those elements. The um, <clears throat> first constitutional model, 1965, followed by the second constitutional model of 1977, and now we have the 1991 model of the Constitution for the Federation of Earth. Now, this particular model, the 1991 model, if you go to our website, therevelationfile.com, and click on the tab entitled One World Index, you can, I'll, I'll take you to this new world constitution, which you can now download into your computer, all 50 pages. They've pulled back the veil. They want the entire world to have their own working model of this new constitution for the Federation of Earth. You can download it from our website and have your own copy. Um, the World Thinkers and Writers Peace Meet just occurred this past December 2019 in Kolkata, India. And again, <clears throat> they are plotting the approach to a global time of peace and a global era of one world government where all nations will be brought together. Now, this is not conspiracy theory, folks. These are the facts. Again, if you go to the revelationfile.com and the One World Index tab, I provide a link directly into the World Parliament. It shows you their latest bills and all the work that they're doing to legitimize the World Parliament. I give you a link to the World Constitution. I give you a link to the World Flag. Uh, also a link to the World Currency. And a link to the preamble, I'm, I'm sorry, the Pledge of Allegiance to the Constitution of Planet Earth. And you can download that into your computer. And uh, we have a YouTube video out where I unfurl that new flag. And I'm reciting that Pledge of Allegiance as I'm unfurling that flag. This <clears throat> new Earth Constitution, or this new Earth Parliament, is becoming its new name. Not just a world parliament, but a new earth or united earth parliament. Here's a sample of the new flag. This is what the new world flag looks like. And it's also been selected by NASA to be the official emblem on the suits, the astronaut suits, to Mars. So no longer an American emblem, but the new earth emblem on, that, on those space suits. Going back to the vision of Nebuchadnezzar, the feet and toes are partly of clay and part of iron. They will cling together, but they won't be fully united. They'll be united in cause, but there'll still be enough competition among them to create stress among them. But this is where we are in this current time of prophesied history going forward, <clears throat> is in the time of the feet of Nebuchadnezzar's vision. Strobe Talbot, President Clinton's Deputy Secretary of State, made the comment in Time Magazine, quote, In the next century, this, this century, nations as we know it will be obsolete. All states will recognize single global authority. National sovereignty wasn't such a great idea after all. End of quote. Thomas Friedman, in his book, The Lexus and the Olive Tree, wrote, Globalization has replaced the Cold War system with the integration of capital, technology, and information across national borders, uniting Brazilian peasants, Indonesian entrepreneurs, Chinese villages, and Silicon Valley technocrats in a single global village. You cannot understand the morning news or think about the future unless you understand this new system. So again, the pundits are saying that the system were on the brink of crossing over into this new system officially, logistically, to operate at a level of a one-world system. <clears throat> Walter Cronkite, the former anchor, late anchor of the CBS Evening News for nearly 20 years, on October uh, 19, 1999, said, 
If we are to avoid catastrophic world conflicts, we must strengthen the United Nations as a first step toward a world government. To do that, of course, we Americans will have to yield up some of our sovereignty. That would be a bitter pill. It would take a lot of courage and a lot of faith in the new order. So even Mr. Cronkite spoke in terms of a new world order, a one world system in which all nations would have to surrender a very large percentage of their national sovereignties as nations. The, um, on CNBC just recently, uh, they gave a report entitled Why China's Rise May Call for a New World Order, in which they said, quote, the international community needs to reestablish a world order based on rules as the rise of China coincides with the decline in Europe and American power according to business and politics experts. So as the <clears throat> presence and the power of the American and European continents begin to wane, China and Asia and Russia are moving in to fill in some of that void. It will reach a point of parity in the, in the presence of crisis and stress that the nations can't handle. And that's when they will res- surrender to a new plan for a new system in hopes of being able to survive that which they see coming and can't manage and administrate. So as recently as April uh, in 2019, CNBC gave this report indicating that because of the rise of China, a new world system is in play and on the, ver- uh, on the horizon. That's future Earth 2020. <clears throat> as we go forward, I will bring forth other elements that we've covered in the past to tie tie it together and make a common message out of where we're headed next and what we can expect as we go into this new decade. Um, One of the things that I've been pointing out here of late is the fact that this is to be a dark century, a dark decade, if you will, going forward. And I don't have the the time to go into all the finer details of this, but to say that even our weather systems are prophetically speaking to us. And I don't intend to sound like a madman here, but I want you to pay attention to the deterioration of everything around us, not just the political and the economic, but also meteorological. And the Bible talks about how you will see strange signs in the heavens and on the earth. Men's hearts fading them for fear, stressing out, no place to turn, no no place to hide, calling for the rocks to fall down upon them. And that's even before they see Jesus coming back in the sky. So what's to be our position as believers? Again, I remind you that the Bible says, do not fear, do not be dismayed. Do not become stressed on these things. These things were prophesied before they occurred. And if you are a student of Scripture at all, then everything that's happening is expected. The world is looking for its own version of a Savior, a Messiah. They're not looking to the divine. They're not reaching out to the one who came, whose birthday we recently celebrated at Christmas. Now, I find it interesting that the whole world is celebrating not the Jewish year, but the Gentile year. 2,020 years after what? Well, the world won't tell you, but the fact is still there. It's 2,020 years after Christ came. It's marking the birth of Christ, and it has swept the entire world. They won't admit it, but that's the way it is. And that same Christ said, I'm coming back. And here are the signs that you should be looking for, so that you will know and be at peace when those times hit. The the Christian world is looking for revival. America Christians are looking for revival. They're prophesying it. They're expecting it. And that's fine. A revival is coming. If those of you who are veteran viewers, you may recall that a few programs ago, I talked about Isaiah 18 
the 18th chapter of the prophet Isaiah in his book. And it's addressing a particular nation. I call it a mystery nation at a distant time. I invite you to go on our website, wallywoodministries.com, and find that manuscript and order it. Because there, I take you verse by verse, there's only about eight verses in that chapter, showing you the identification of this one particular nation that's been singled out in the prophecy of Isaiah. And it opens with the word woe. Woe to this nation. And it describes this nation as people. And it tells you what this nation is going to have to go through and will come to the breaking point. And it's at that breaking point, the Bible says that they will pay an homage to the Lord and they will be revived at or in the time of the harvest, in the time of his return. There's coming a revival. I identify that nation as the United States with proof. That that's what that passage is talking about. And I lay out to you the blueprint by which this particular nation, America, is going to have to go through some heavy, heavy, heavy times. Or else the word woe would not be there. But there's encouragement. There is salvation for this nation as it is brought to its knees. So I encourage you to go on the website, again, it's wallywoodministries.com, and order that manuscript. It's about 40 pages long. I think you'll find it to be fascinating and intriguing reading. It's very timely to the times that we're living in now. And um, draw closer to the Lord. I may have some non-believers listening to the show. That's fine. But to the body, draw closer to the Lord. Get deeper in prayer. Go deeper in your study of Scripture. Understand Bible prophecy as it is written not as it's perceived to be. Even the Bible says that the man who sees and understands these things, he purifies himself. He prepares himself. So this is the time to get prepared. I thank you for listening. We'll be back for our next program soon. And again, we welcome you to the Revelation File Forum and the Revelation, Revelation File News Service. And we'll see you again in our next program. I'm Wally Wood. You have been watching the Revelation File Report with Wally Wood, a Wally Wood Ministries production from Houston, Texas. You are able to support the ministry by donating at wallywoodministries.com and by mail at Wally Wood Ministries, P.O. Box 42005, Houston, Texas 77242. Wally is available to present full two-hour forums in your city called the Revelation File News Forum. For more details, contact Andy Valadez at 713-560-3348 or by email at andy at andyvalades.com. The Revelation File News Report is a weekly update of global trends in the news as it aligns with end-time Bible prophecy. Tune in again next time and be sure to like and share this channel.